Welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Today we're carrying on with the Biology 1.1 unit, which is cells and the movement across cell membranes. Last time we were talking about diffusion as a way of things getting in and out of cells by their cell membranes. Today we're going to be looking at how visking tubing can model this process in experiments. Visking tubing is a way of modelling how this works. So the visking tubing is this stuff here, this kind of wiggly... Uh, slippery material that you can put solutions in and then see what happens with diffusion. Now this visking tubing acts like a cell membrane where it has this selectively permeable membrane so there are all these little gaps ready for things to move through but the gaps are not big enough for something bigger to go through so that could not come in but this one could. Okay so remember that. So what you should have done in class then is a little practical or a demo on this visking tubing. And what we usually do is we, in the middle here, in our actual visking tubing, so inside the cell, this is like the, the demonstration of inside the cell, I'll draw it over here, we have a starch solution, or it says here starch solution. And this goes like a cloudy white colour in the middle, and they are full of large particles. So we would have lots of big bits of starch inside. Okay, inside our visking tubing. If you were looking from the bird's eye view here, that's what it'd be like. And surrounding this then, we have a solution of water with iodine. Okay, so we've got some water molecules here and we've also got some iodine. So maybe they're a little bit bigger. Maybe they have a bit of space in the middle here. So that would be iodine. Now, at the partially permeable membrane, or at the selectively permeable membrane, these big starch things, I said here, they can't get through. Okay, they cannot go through to the other side. Now, there's a high concentration of starch in here because there's none on the outside. So it wants to move, it wants to reach equilibrium, it wants to have that, it wants to go down that concentration gradient, but it can't. Now, iodine, on the other hand, is on the outside over here. And it can get through. It's small enough to get through these gaps. And it also wants to go down a concentration gradient. So it's going to start doing that. Iodine is going to start coming into our cell where the starch already is. So our iodine is going to move in. Okay, and it will reach this equilibrium. It will go down the concentration gradient until there is no more gradient, until it's horizontal again, if you remember that. Okay. So when these two solutions mix together, when you have iodine and when you have starch mixed together, you get a dark blue result. So the inside of that visking tubing would go a dark blue colour. So it would go like this. And that's how you know that the reaction has happened. That's how you know that iodine has come in, because it's reacting together to form a dark blue solution or a, almost black. Okay, so if that comes up in the exam, you know what that's about. In the next video, then, we're going to be looking at a little bit more detail about diffusion as a passive process and oxygen and carbon dioxide as examples of why we need diffusion in cells.